The brother standing before you right here, this organization is Israel United in Christ. All right, we are here to teach the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who we are according to the Bible. That's right. All right, that's why we're out here today. Um, I didn't get your name. I was standing across the street. What's your name, brother? Ronnell? Darnell. And what's your name, sister? Darnell and Sylvia. Okay, all praises to the Most High. I'm glad you all made it out here today. Um, get me the book of John chapter 9, verse 31. Sylvia, Darnell, let me ask y'all a question. Do y'all pray to God? You, of course. Okay, you, you're not leaving, are you? Okay, all right. So, Darnell, you say you do pray to God. I understand, I understand. I'm just going to dialogue with you. That way it's not me just preaching to you the whole time. Um, if you have something to say, definitely let me know. All right, we're going to read out the Bible. All right, yep, read. This is the book of John, chapter 9 and verse 31. See, this is, this is something that is not commonly taught in these churches, like the one you see across the street. Right. Read. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. So the Most High God, when we pray, if we're, if we're committing willful sin, the Bible says that God will not hear our prayers. Right? That's very important for us to know. Read on. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will. And doeth what? His will. So any man that's a worshiper of God, if you're doing his will, we got to find out what God's will is. If we're doing his will, then the Bible says that the Lord will hear your prayers. So we want to come out here today to teach the people what God's will is so that our prayers can be heard by God. Read. This is the book of Psalm, chapter 40 and verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God, yea, thy law. Thy what? Thy law. So God's will is his law. Finish that. Is within my heart. John 9, 31. Read. This is the book of John, chapter 9, verse 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God. So if you want to worship God, read. And doeth his will. And you keep his laws according to the Bible, read. Him he heareth. Then he will hear your prayers. This is what the Bible says, right? So we're going to go through just a few laws. Get me the book of Numbers, chapter 15. And also get uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. We're going to go through a few scriptures, right, to understand why God might not be hearing our prayers. Right? Uh, first, give me 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. All right, we're going to find out what sin is. Sin according to the Bible. What is it? The Bible will tell us what that is. Read. This is the book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Whosoever committed what? Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Darnell, according to the Bible, read that one more time. Tell me what sin is. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin. So whosoever committed sin, what does he do? Transgresseth also the law. Transgressive God's law. So to commit sin is to transgress or break God's laws. You agree with that, Darnell? That's what it say, right? We just reading out the book. Am I making any of this stuff up? All praises to the Most High. All right, so from there, um, Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Read. It's all right. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. This is the book of Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. So this is Moses here, right? This was... Two th over 2,000 years ago. Moses is in the wilderness, and he's speaking to the people that you see on this sign. I'm not sure if you see your name on this sign right here, but the so-called Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans are God's chosen people. That's right. right? That's right. And these laws that were written were given to the children of Israel in the, Mos in, in the, in the wilderness by Moses. Right? So Moses was dealing with the Lord. The Lord blessed Moses with commandments to give the people on this sign. That's what we're reading right here. Right? Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. The book of Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. So the Lord is telling Moses, Moses, go speak unto the children of Israel. Right? Your forefathers, perhaps. The people on this sign. Read. And bid them 
that they make them fringes. Bid means to, to command them. Right? So instruct the children of Israel to do what? That they make them fringes. That they make them fringes. What you see on our garments, these are fringes right here. Or tassels. Uh, we put them on the border or the ends of our garments. That's what you're seeing right here. I just want you to understand why we have this on. Because it's in the Bible. Read on. In the borders of their garments. Throughout their generations. Read. And that they put upon the friends of the borders a ribbon of blue. So that's why right here, Darnell, you see a ribbon. A ribbon of blue. It's a commandment in the Bible for us to put this on our garments. But New Calvary Baptist Church ain't teaching they congr uh, their congregation, right, to, to keep these types of commandments. But it's written in the Bible, right? They're preventing our people from the prayers being heard by the Most High God. Right? That's very important. Read on. And it shall be unto you for a friend that ye may look upon it. So this this fringe and this border of blue is supposed to be on your garments to do what? And it shall be unto you for a friend that ye may look upon it and remember. So when you see it, when you see these fringes and this ribbon of blue, you should remember what? All the commandments. No, just some of the commandments. All the commandments. So when you see this ribbon of blue and, the, and these fringes, you should remember the rest of the things that you read about in the Bible. So this is a constant reminder of God's word, of God's will, of God's law. Read on. And do them, and that ye seek not after your own So, So not that you just remember them, but also that you do them. That's what the Bible says. That you, do, that you seek not what? And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes. Because we some, we some lustful people. We see a, a nice car drive by, right? Everybody turning and breaking their neck to look. You know, we want to see who's driving it. We want to see what color it is, right? That's the lust that's within us that we have to overcome. But these fringes should remind us, yo, we can't give in to that, you know? Darnell, we can't. We, we better than that. You know, Christ, he, he, he built us up, right, to be mighty men and to rule this earth. So nothing should... We shouldn't give power uh, over ourselves to anything, right? Except for the Most High God. That's what these fringes are supposed to teach you. That makes sense, Darnell? All uh, praises. All right, so that's one law. It's another law. Get um, uh, uh, Leviticus chapter 19. This is another law that God gave the children of Israel when we were in the wilderness, right? Uh, verse 27, read. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 27. You know? Ye shall not round the corners of your head. So the Bible says, I can't see your head because you got a head on. But it says, ye shall not round, right, the corners of what? Of your head. Of your head. Right? Read on. Neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. So mar means to destroy. That's what that word means. So you shouldn't destroy your beard. Right? And it's going to make it plainer in chapter 21. Read that. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make baldness. They shall not do what? Make baldness upon their head. So the Bible says that you shouldn't bald your head, right? Is that right? That's right. Read on. Off the corner of their beard. You shouldn't shave your beard, right? According to the Bible. Is that what it say, Darnell? That's what it says, right? But we haven't learned these things because the places we're going to be taught God's word, they're not teaching it to us. Right. right? So so we, we're not being brought up according to the customs of the Most High God. That's why we're out here today. Right? We can't depend on all of these churches you see on each. It's, a, it's two churches on this corner. On this one street that I can see. You know, I can I can see three churches from where I'm standing right now. Do you live in this area? You do. All right. Have you heard any of these any of these churches teaching that you shouldn't shave off your beard or shave your head? Right? You listening? I don't know if you've heard that or not. Right? But I know that I also have lived in Norfolk, and when I lived in Norfolk, won't well, nobody teaching me that. Right? So we're coming out to the street to teach God's commandments so that your prayers can be heard. Don't forget the point. That's right. All right. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. One more time. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off 
the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. So that's that's for tattoos, right? So the Bible says that you shouldn't get any tattoos. You shouldn't make cuttings in your flesh for who? At, oh. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So you shouldn't make any cuttings in your flesh, right? Get Leviticus chapter 19, verse, is it 27 or 28? Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. So the Bible says, Darnell, that you shouldn't make any cuttings in your flesh, right? You shouldn't do that for the dead. A lot of our people... We, we go and we get tattoos, right? I'm guilty of it. Why? Because I wasn't taught our customs in the Bible when I was brought up. I'm not sure if anyone taught you that growing up. But I'm here to tell you that at, at one point in time, we were here listening just like you. And we were guilty of a lot of things in this Bible. Right. We were guilty of a lot of it. But if, if we're not corrected, let me show you one more scripture. This is how you show love to your people. I'm not out here to offend nobody, right? I'm out here to build my people up. Right? So go to Leviticus chapter 19. You got that? Yes, sir. Uh, read verse 17. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. You hear what the Bible is? It tells me that that's another commandment that I have to look down at these fringes and I got to remember that I can't hate my brother in my heart, in my mind. I can't do that. That's a commandment. Right? So I'm not out here to show hatred to you. Or to show hatred to anybody else that's out here listening to me. Right? Read on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So the Bible tells me that we're required to rebuke our neighbors. Right? To rebuke means to correct. So that's another commandment. When I look down at these fringes, when I put them on, I got to remember that I got I to gotta be able to rebuke my neighbor. Right? Because if I don't, I'm going to be judged for that. And now God won't hear my prayers. You understand what I'm saying, Darnell? All right, so this ain't to offend you. We're just out here to teach God's laws. Right. You know what? And not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. You know what a grudge? What's your name, bro? Will. Will. You know what a grudge is? Yes, I do. All right, how do you hold a grudge to somebody? The way I hold a grudge to somebody, it's really feeling. It's emotional, yes. right? Right, we've all been weak at that, right? We've all at some point in time held a grudge. But the Bible tells us when we read this not to do that. Right? Read verse 18 again. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. You hear that? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, so the Bible tells us that we can't hold grudges, you know, towards our people. So why is there a thing called grudge then? Because... Evidently, God went through a grudge himself for it to be in a prison also, bro. So who 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 does God have a grudge with? Me personally, who God got a grudge with? Because yeah, what you saying? I, 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 I can only say that how we seen it was one time that when he had a grudge about me. You you you're right. You're right. Because we were sinning and he made everything. He made everything. Hosea for us. chapter five verse ten. I'm going to show before that Proverbs 28 9. You, you, what you're saying, you're hitting on some things right now, right? So, what's up? Yep, look, you're hitting on some things right now. So, if you bear with me and have some patience, I'm going to show you some things that you're saying inside the Bible. And then you're going to speak, I'm going to speak, we're just going to keep speaking. That's fair? All right, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. Before you came here, we was going into how God, he don't hear sinners, right? He don't hear sinners. So if we're committing willful sin and then we bow down at night to pray to him, right? He's not going to, we can't, we can't depend on him to hear our prayers. That's, that's what we were bringing out before you still here. We read okay. that. All right. So listen to this. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 28 and verse nine. He that turns away his ear from hearing the law. So if you turn away from your ear, so like, you know, we're preaching, let's say, for instance, we out here or someone else is out here preaching the law. But you say, nah, I ain't going to do that. I'm going to turn away my ear. I'm going to go do my own thing. Right? Read on. Even his prayer shall be abomination. You know what abomination is? Abomination. Abomination is something that's that's despicable. Right? Yeah, you, you attest that thing. You know, you don't. Yeah, that, that's what it's something gross, nasty. That's what your prayers consider. 
when we're out here, you know, committing willful sin. Think about like you have a son, a child, and you, you give your child instructions, right? But he don't listen to you. He go do whatever the hell he want to do. Excuse my language. He go do whatever he want to do, right? But then he come back and like, Dad, let me get five dollars. Let me get ten dollars. Let me go to the skating rink, right? What you gonna say? No, sir. You gonna say nah, right? It's the same thing. That's the same thing that God does to us when we're not keeping His laws and we go to Him and pray. Does that make sense? That do. That make a whole All right. sense. All right. We won't go back to the grudge thing. I was just talking about. One that. more scripture. Okay. All right. Hosea. Yep. Read that. This is the book of Hosea, chapter five and verse fifteen. Right now, this is righteous according to the Bible. Okay. All right. Okay. Read. I will go and return to my place. So this is this is the Lord speaking, right? He's saying, I am going to go to my place, right? Read. Till they acknowledge their offense. They is the children of Israel, right? We uh, An offense is a transgression of God's law. So what we need to do is acknowledge and realize, right, that we broke God's commandments. That's what we have to do. That's how you acknowledge an offense, right? That's how you acknowledge an offense. Read it again from the top. The book of Hosea, chapter 5 and verse 15. I will go and return to my place. God says, I'm going to leave you. Read. Till they acknowledge their offense. So you acknowledge the things that you've done wrong. Right? Read on. And seek my face. And seek my face and come back to, 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 to keeping my will. Come back and doing the things that I told you to do. So until you do that. Don't pray to me, yeah. right? So, so that's a righteous grudge that God has with his, with, with us. But why, why? Because even a natural father is going to correct his children if he loves them, yeah, if, he loves if he loves them. them. So that's that's a righteous, that's a righteous grudge, is it not? Yeah, yeah. Right. So those types of grudges you can find in the Bible, right? Okay. Those types okay. of grudges yeah, okay. you can find them. Now. But that's right. that. But that's to do what? That's to that's to keep all of us on one accord in the same spirit and in the same mind. That's what that's to do, right? Um, three holy children, uh, verse five. This is what we should do once you realize that your name is on this sign, you're an Israelite, right? You understand that God has turned his back away from you, right? The reason that you're going through some of the things you're going through is probably because of the sin that's in your life, right? Because the, you, you're praying for some things and I don't know if you received everything that you prayed for, but you may not have due to some sin that's gumming up that, you know, that, 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 that your prayers, you know, being, being taken to the Lord. Right. So this is what we should do. Read verse five. This is the book, the three holy children. Verse five. In all the things that thou has brought upon us and upon the holy city. Of Th this should be our mind of all the, the evil, the atrocities, because. The black man in America, the Hispanics, right? So-called black man, the so-called Hispanic, the so-called Native American in this world, right? Are we on the top or are we on the bottom? We on the bottom, no question, right? No question about that. We on the bottom. But I know why, though. Why? Because I feel like the reason why we're on the bottom because that's what we prefer to be at, bro. We want to be at the bottom. We want to be at the top, bro. But when we was at the top, we ain't want to we ain't want to do things right bro so you know what i'm saying so go ahead. it made us it made us go to the bottom to actually care want to want to understand the love and make sure that we love everybody bro what's what, what's that if all of us was on top bro if all of us was actually on top bro who is who let, let me uh, clarify i'm, saying, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm gonna let you finish i'm just trying saying, to understand yeah. so when you say all of us who are you speaking about i'm talking about me and my me as far as me and my family bro your and, people, and like the people, people that, 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 the people that I love, that who okay. I take care of. Okay. You're not talking about the white man or I'm the Chinese man. Okay. Me, All right, I'm, I'm with talking you. About, I'm talking because it, it got to start with me, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Especially if something came to my life, it got to start with me, bro. Right. Sometimes it's the way how I say things, they will not get to nobody. Right. But how I say it, it will not get to them. Uh huh. So maybe you could say it for somebody, for it to get to somebody else, bro. You might understand me. Can I speak? Like, yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right. So you said a lot, right? And one of the things that you said was that we are on the bottom because we haven't acknowledged our offense. What? That's what we just read. You just quoted what we just read. Yeah. Well, I right? I said it my so, way. So, so, now, I'm just so now that you acknowledge your offense, right. now that you recognize that you Israel and you're trying to build your family up, yeah. how should your mind be? On that same, on Th same This is how your mind should be. Okay. Right? Read that. In all the things that thou hast brought upon us 
and upon the holy city of our fathers. Right, because all these things you got to think about all the curses that you read about in Deuteronomy 28. Some of you may be familiar with it. Some of you may not be familiar with it. But this right here, what you see on these signs is what you read about in Deuteronomy 28. So the, the, sla the slavery that you see, right, the slave ships. You see that? The transatlantic slave trade. We've gone to all of these different countries, yeah. right, in slavery. But God, the Lord that takes care of everything on this earth, he allowed that thing to happen. So you have to ask yourself, why would God allow these things to happen to our forefathers, right? This is still the reason why we in the ghettos today. We haven't been able to recover from the slavery that was done to our people, right? So these things that you see are our children getting slammed up against rocks, right? Them raping our children, them raping our wives, them taking our women, all of these things on our son, God allowed these things to happen to us, right? 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 Why? Because we hadn't yet acknowledged our offense and turned back to the Lord. So this is how our mind should be. Read on. Even Jerusalem thou hast executed. Now remember, Jerusalem is the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, right? Read on. Thou hast executed true judgment. What type of judgment was the transatlantic slave trade? True judgment. So the Bible says that that's a true judgment executed on our people. Us living in the ghettos right now, having to go ahead to buy food from this uh, Arabian. I think that's who owns this shop, yes. right? Right. You you don't have your, We don't have our own yes. heritage, know, so right? Hey, it, it was it was taken from us because we weren't keeping God's commandments. Right. It was taken from us because we didn't acknowledge our offense. Right. It was taken from us because our minds still ain't what we're reading right here. Right. Right. So read on. For according to truth and judgment didst thou bring all these things upon us because of our sins. So because of our sins, our sins, our sins is why these things happen to us. Right. Okay. Our sins. Oh, okay. Right? Look, Go ahead. People, people, I feel like what you just said about sin, I think people trying to cash in on that. Now let me tell you why I feel like Hold that. on. Do you understand what sin is? Yeah. To, to my knowledge, why I mean by sin is that you know when you're doing wrong, you did wrong anyway. Well, what's wrong? What, what's wrong? You got to get specific what, with us because you got to understand. Okay. I'm going to let you speak. Okay. You got to understand that but this, all this stuff that you see right here happened because of sin. So it's very important that everybody else and anyone else who catches wind of this conversation yeah. understands what sin is. Okay. Because we need to know not to do that thing anymore, right? What you All right, so read First John chapter so, 3, verse so 4. Many, so many sins that everybody don't know every sin. We're going to read 1 John chapter 3, verse 4 to help us give us some clarification. Okay. All right, read that. This is the book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin. So whosoever committed sin, what does he do? Transgresseth also the law. What's transgress mean? If you transgress the law, you, you say back. it again? Break it. To break it. Yeah. So if you transgress the law, that means that you've broken the law. Right? So read it again from the top. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. So whosoever committed sin does what? He breaks the law. He transgresses God's law. Read on. For sin is. What sin? Sin is the transgression of the law. So now we got a clear understanding of what sin is. Sin is the transgression of God's law. We got a deal like this. So everybody's on the same accord. So everybody understands what's coming out, right? You gotta go ahead. You've been standing for for a minute. You you you, you mind if I take this question? Real quick? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I was watching a movie. I guess the cry of Judah, how, how uh, the Most High God had heard the cry of uh, Israel when it was in uh, Egypt. What will it take for him to hear a cry again? You understand know what I'm saying? Yes. What will it take for him to hear the cry again? Should it live up? All praises. That's right in the same accord with, with what we're reading right now. Get um, Leviticus chapter 26. Um, yeah, verse 40. That's a good question. It's, it's in the same spirit of what we're dealing with right now. So we're trying to figure out, you know, what is it going to take for the Most High to hear, you know, our, our, our prayers. To, to recognize who we are. Because you understand, you, I see your fringes all praise to the Most High. I see your board of blue. See, right now the truth is coming out. So the conversation isn't whether or not I'm an Israelite. People walking around knowing they're Israel. It's, what's the next step after that? What are we going to do now? Right? You walking up, you got fringes on. I don't see that all the time. All praises to the Most High. Read that. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 26 and verse 40. If they shall confess their iniquity. So this was when we were in the wilderness, the children of Israel. Right? We were delivered out of Egypt. 
right? We were in the wilderness, right? For 400 years. What did God say? God said, look, I set before you this day, get uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26. Right. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26. Read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 26. So this was also said to them in the wilderness, right? Read. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. So set before you is a blessing and a curse, right? A blessing and a curse. A blessing is good. Everybody understand that? But a curse is what? A curse is bad. If you, if you curse, then you're probably not progressing, right? So set before them was what? Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Read. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God. So a blessing was to the children of Israel if they obey God's commandments. But what? Which I command you this day. And a curse. A what? A curse Read. if ye will not. Obey the commandments of the Lord your God. So this was told to the children of Israel inside the wilderness, okay. right? These people was taken out of Egypt. They were taken into the wilderness, and they were told, look, set before you, I, I'm, I'm Moses, right? I just spoke with the Lord. Set before you, nation, is a gift and a curse. A, a blessing is the gift if you keep God's commandments, and a curse, right, if you don't keep God's commandments, right? That's what was told to the children of Israel. Right. So what did they do? That's the question that you should be that you should be asking yourself. It's probably apparent given the state of our people. But we're going to read it out of the Bible. Right. I'm going to read it out of the Bible. Um, read uh, Daniel chapter nine, verse 11. Um, and then we're going back to Leviticus. All right. Uh, Daniel chapter nine, verse 11, because Daniel came a thousand years after Moses. Right. Right. If you follow the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, right. Daniel is, is, is a whole nother captivity. We were just delivered from the captivity of Egypt, right? From there, we had the Assyrian captivity, right? And then we had the Babylonian captivity, right? So Daniel is prophesying in what captivity? The Babylonian captivity. So this is years later. That, what I just said should answer your question, because why would God allow the children of Israel to even go into another captivity? Only because they were breaking God's commandments. They were committing sin, right? Right, it's real simple, but we're going to read it out the Bible, so I'm not making this stuff up. Read. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 9, and verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. All Israel. Why? Because these people were the only ones giving God's laws to begin with. They were the only ones delivered out of Egypt, taken into the wilderness, and giving God's laws. Right? Right, so they're held accountable to that. Just like your children are held accountable to what you tell them. Responsibility. It's responsibility. They were held responsible to that. Yeah. Your children are held responsible to the things that you tell them. But your neighbor's children or your, your, the man across the street, they're not held accountable to what you tell your children. Right? It's the same way with God. And guess what? And people want to be that. They do. But they should that. because they, we... Because they don't want to handle responsibility, bro. Right, right. They don't want to have responsibility. But they, they we don't want to have responsibility right. either. But stay right. on the point. Stay on the point. Right? Read on. Even by departing that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. So what happened? Did they keep God's commandments? Or did they break God's commandments? The Bible says that a curse was poured out upon them. Read. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned. Y'all remember that oath? We just read the oath in Deuteronomy chapter 11. The oath was, look, you keep God's commandments, you're blessed. Right? And you and you you break God's commandments, and what happens? You cur wait, say it again. And you curse, right? That's the oath that Daniel is talking about. Read that part again. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. So did they keep God's laws? No. So what happened? They were cursed. Read on. Even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses. So the curse is still on us till this day. Because Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45 and 46, tells us that it's going to be upon us and our children and their children and their children all the way until today. Read on. That is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Because we have sinned. So this is to answer your question. What's your name again? Malachi. Malachi. All praises. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 40. So the children of Israel was given laws when they were brought out of Egypt. Right? What was set before them was a gift and a curse. 
a blessing, a blessing and a curse, right? Hold on, we understand. I'm gonna ask your first question first. We understand right now that the children of Israel were in the curses because our forefathers broke God's commandments. So even to today, they didn't teach their children God's commandments. They didn't teach their children God's commandments. They didn't teach their children God's commandments. So today, we don't know God's commandments. So these people are still cursed in the city. Y'all understand that? They still cursed in the city. Your question was, well, what do we do to get out of this? So it was prophesied that the children of Israel would do what? Break God's commandments. It was prophesied that that would happen, right? In Leviticus chapter 26, when they were still in the wilderness, right? When they had just been delivered out of Egypt, the Lord told them how to fix the situation. The Lord told them how to fix the situation. That's what you just asked, right? Read. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 40. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers. So we got to confess the sins, not only of us, but also the sins of, of our fathers and our parents and our forefathers. Because we realize, yo, we've been way off. This whole time, I've been thinking I'm black, I'm a Negro, I'm an African-American, I'm a Moor. I'm, I'm all of these things, right? But really, I'm an Israelite. And my parents were too. They just didn't know. They didn't tell me. That's what we have to do. We have to acknowledge that thing. Read on. Which they trespassed against me, and that, they, and that also they have walked contrary unto me. Wait, how, how do we walk? Contrary unto me. We got to acknowledge that offense, that we walk contrary, right, to the Lord. We got to acknowledge that we haven't been walking in accordance with his ways, right? We have to confess that, right? Read on. And that I also have walked contrary unto them. What's that? That's that grudge you was talking about, right? So because we won't keep in God's commandments, what happened? God said, all right, well, I ain't going to deal with them like that. I'm going to let them go through it until they repent and come back to me. And then when they do, I will listen to their prayers. Read on. And have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then, are you in the land of enemies right now? No question. Read on. If then their uncircumcised heart be humble. So our minds have to be humble, right? We got to humble ourselves to say, yo, I'm, 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 I'm going to do that right there. I'm going I'm to cut my shirt up. I'm going to put some fringes on that thing, right? That's what I'm going to do. Why? Because the Bible tells us to do that. Read on. And they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. We got to accept this punishment and we can't fight it. We just got to say, yo, I understand I messed up. I'm just going to deal with the consequences. Lord's will. He have mercy on me. Right? Read on. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob. Oh, what will God do? Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob. That's how we recover from this. Because when we confess our sins, when we turn from our iniquities, when we start keeping God's commandments, then the Lord will remember the covenant that he made with our forefathers. He, he'll remember that covenant. So right now, you're, you're, you're pursuing perfection. So you've taken steps to keep more and more and more of God's commandments. And the more you do that, the sooner Christ will come back and deliver this nation from this captivity. Right. Was that it? Read on. Was that it? And also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember. So he's going to remember the covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and who else? And I will remember the land. He will remember the land that he gave Jacob. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 21. Read that scripture. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 21. Because this is, a, this is a part of that confessing your sins. This is a part of you acknowledging your offense. This is what you should do. Right. Read on. Read. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 21. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins. We wicked right now, right? Most of our people are living in wickedness. Most of our people are not keeping God's commandments, right? Most of our people are not keeping God's commandments, right? Chapter 11, or oh, no, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We coming right back there, all right? 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This is a, another offense of our people, right? This is a, another offense. Uh, start at verse three. Verse three, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So what's that mean? The head of every man is who? It's Christ, right? Read on. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is who? Who's the head of the woman? The man, according to the Bible, right? I, I'm not making this stuff up, am I? Read on. And the head of Christ is God. And who's the head of Christ? God. So that means a separation between, between his son, Jesus the Christ, and the Most High God, right? So what'd you say? You said God, man, woman, right? And then the children. It's an order established, right? 
So how do we respect that today? Read on. Every man praying or prophesying. So right now, what are we doing? Well, we're, we're bringing out the testimony of Jesus Christ, right? We're bringing out the spirit of the Lord. That's what we're doing today. Everybody agree with that? Right? That's what we're doing today, right? Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. So right now, right, what are we doing? We're, we're prophesying. We're bringing out God's words. The Bible says that every man that's praying or prophesying, read, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So when we're doing this, right, and we're dialoguing and we, we, we're speaking about the Bible, the scriptures say that you dishonor who when your head is covered? You dishonor, read it again, read verse 3 again. Verse 3, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So you're dishonoring Christ, right? When your head is covered, right? So what you gonna do? Now we bring in our scriptures. You know it's an offense, and you want to wake your people up, right? You want to deliver your family from this captivity, right? So the appropriate thing to do, according to the scriptures, would be to remove your hat, right? That the scriptures are coming up, right? Um, but right, everyone won't follow these laws. But that's also in the Bible. Y'all understand that? Right? Y'all, that's also in the Bible. Like, can they be saved too? Like, can who be saved? The first thing I wanted to, uh, first thing I want to know is what your question is. Because you asked a question about I us. Right. I'm going to come back to you to answer a question. Right now we're just bringing out laws. All we, all we can do, look, I just, I just brought out a law to you, right? I said, every man praying a prophesy with his head covered. That's sin. And sin is keeping our nation in captivity. You make your own decision. I can't make you do anything. All I can do is bring out the laws to the people. Some of our people gonna repent, and some of our people not. Some of our people gonna be saved, and some of them gonna be destroyed. Right? That's all we all we can do here is bring out the laws. I can't make you take your head off. I can't do that. I can't make our people right uh, stop being whoremongers. I can't make our women stop being whores. I can't do that. But I can bring out the scriptures in the Bible. So, from us bringing out the scriptures in the Bible, right? Hold where you were and get, uh, where were we at in Ezekiel? 18, verse 21. Yep, read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18 and verse 21. This is why we're out here. Because I can't, I can, I can bring out scriptures till I'm blue in the face. Yeah. Right? If the Most High ain't call you to keep God's commandments, you're not going to do them. Right? You're not going to do them. It might not be any of y'all that repent that's standing right here. But somebody might watch this video and say, yo, he was dealing with them brothers. You know, I, you know, I got my head on right now. Let me take this thing off because I'm listening to the Bible. Somebody that's not even standing out here might do that. You understand what I'm saying? Read on. Verse 21. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins. So this is what we are commanded to preach, right? Because at one point in time, we're wicked. Even today, we still do wicked things. We got to repent daily, right, and confess our sins. We got to die daily, right? Read on. And keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right. Is that what I wanted, 18 and 21? Uh, but if the wicked will, yeah, that's it. Read it again. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he has committed. So we got to turn from our sins, right? We got to turn from our sins that we've committed. Read on. And that he have committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right. So we got to turn from our sins, turn from them, and do that which is lawful and do that which is right. Now, another commandment, and this is what you asked, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. You said, why we keep killing our people, right? Yeah. That was the, the second yeah. question. So did your first question get answered? Yeah, my first question. All right. Yeah. Your second question was... Hold on. Repeat your second question. Uh, why, we, why, we keep, uh, black, why do we keep killing each other? Right. Would I, would I kill someone that I love? Uh -huh. So what, what do we do to each other? We don't, say it again. We don't love ourselves. If I don't love myself, how can you expect me to show love to my brother? Right? So that's, that's the problem. We've been so destroyed by this image right here. You probably understand that this ain't Jesus the Christ. This is not what he's depicted to look like in the Bible. Did, did you know that? All right. So this is a better depiction of Jesus Christ and what he looks like in the Bible. Are you familiar with, with this depiction? 
All right, so so we don't even gotta go into that, right? But when you take away mm, an image such as this that looks more closely to yourself than this one right here, what does that do to your thought process? Right, and that's in the Bible. Get Hosea chapter four, I think, three and four. Hosea chapter three, verse four. Right, that's the Bible prophesied that you would go a period of time without having people to look up to, right? You wouldn't have uh, a vision established. And when there is no vision, what happens to the people? They are destroyed, right? They perish away. Um, read that. This is the book of Hosea chapter three and verse four. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image. So the children of Israel, it was prophesied that they would go many days without having an image. That image is the image of who you, that's yourself. Who are you today? Right? If this is taken away from you, what do you identify with? The root word of imagination is what? Go even further. Image. So if I remove your image, what does that do to your imagination? Right? What does that do to your imagination? It destroys it. It's just vain. You don't, every, every person that you look at in America's history from what they're teaching us and our children in school is that our oppressors are great, right? We're taught that our oppressors conquered us. We're taught that we're a weak nation, right? We're taught that this is God, right? So this contributes to the hate that we have for ourselves. And if I don't love myself, then how can, how can I expect to love my brother? If, if I'm destroyed as a person, right? I hate who I am, right? I, I, I was, I was, you know, we've all gone through things as a child, right? As a child, stuff that you won't even speak of today, but you still remember those moments you had when you was a kid, right? When your family or your so-called brothers and sisters made you feel weak or they took advantage of you. And what is that? It destroys you and your image and who you are. So now if that, if my mind is that today, how can I expect to love my brother? How can I do that? I'm gonna struggle with that thing, right? I'm gonna struggle with it. But this is, we, get, we have to turn away from that, right? Because the Bible commands us to show love. Uh, read that. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So the Bible says that you shouldn't do what? You shouldn't hate your brother. So if you just did that right there, would you kill? Could you kill somebody you don't hate? Would you kill someone that you love? No. You wouldn't kill at all, right? But it's people out here. So the people that's out here that's killing people, are they killing people that they love or are they killing people that they hate? They hate, right? Right? That's what they're doing. So if you examine the root cause of this, right? Read on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So you got to correct your neighbor. When you see, when your neighbor does something that, uh, that, that uh, offends you, right? You know how you can keep yourself from holding a grudge against that person? You tell me. Let's say your brother right here, you know, he does something that, you know, that, 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 that ain't sit well with you. Right? Your brother right here, you know, he might have uh, took your car and crashed it and lied to you about it. Right? <laughs> he could, yeah, it's your brother for real. So imagine your brother doing that to you. Right? Right? Yeah. How, how would you respond to, to and he, he didn't tell you that. You know, he just, he, he lied about it. You knew he lied about it. Right? What would you do? What would you do? You need to talk to him about it. If you, if, you, if you didn't talk to him about it, what would happen? You probably what? You probably would hurt him. Let's say you didn't hurt him. How would you behave? What thoughts would you be thinking? Like you need to pay me back in some sort of way. Like you need to pay me back. What if you like, you know, what if you what if you don't tell him that? You just try to deal with it. You know, you don't forgive him, you're still holding that thing. What you got? That's, that's a grudge. That's a grudge. Right? That's a grudge. So the Bible teaches us that we can't hold those things. So when we recognize that we holding grudges with people, right? We gotta repent from that. We got to move forward and love each other according to the Bible. Read. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, Read. but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So this right here alone will help us stop killing each other, right? This right here alone will help us stop killing each other. Matthew chapter 18, right? Because when you find yourself in a position where you think you might start holding a grudge with somebody for something that they did? Don't be so proud, 
right? Because I've been guilty of it. I'm, I'm sure other brothers out here have been guilty of it. Don't be so proud to say, nah, I'm just gonna deal with it. I'm gonna keep it moving and it's not gonna affect my thought process or how I treat other people. Because the Bible teaches you how to deal with that. Read on. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault. So your brother, he wrecked your car, he lied to you about it. What does the Bible tell you to do? Don't hold a grudge, but to do what? Read it again. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault. What should you do? Go and tell him his fault. So you should go and do what? And tell him what's up. Tell him what's wrong. Right? So that's how you avoid having a grudge with somebody. That's how you avoid killing your people. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.